talk about the Belgic Confession of Faith. The Belgic Confession is the confessional statement of what Reformed churches believe, particularly the, the Dutch Reformed churches. As in all statement of faith, it starts with the Article 1 is about the doctrine of God. Let's read it. We all believe with the heart and confess with the mouth that there is only one simple and spiritual being. You see this, we believe with the heart and confess with the mouth. That's like what the Apostle Paul said in Romans. Okay, that there's one simple and spiritual being. So God is a spirit. He is not a physical being and he is a simple being. He cannot be divided into parts and which we call God and that he is eternal, incomprehensible, invisible, immutable, infinite, almighty, perfectly wise, just good and the overflowing fountain on, of all good. So here we see the Belgic Confession in describing God. It lists some of the wonderful attributes of God. Some of them are positive here. It says that God is perfectly wise. He is just and good and all-powerful. And then also uses some negative language saying that God cannot be comprehended. And he is not visible. He is invisible and immutable, which means he does not change. So this uh, is just a wonderful, quick and uh, still very deep description of who this wonderful God is that we serve. Okay, next it goes to Article 2, which is by what means God is made known unto us. Okay, so there is this God, but he is a personal God, and so he is made known to us, his creatures. Okay, so this is classic Reformed theology, Reformation theology, uh, and it says that we know him by two means. The first means is by creation, by the creation, preservation, and government of the universe, which is before our eyes as a most elegant book, wherein all creatures, great and small, are so many characters leading us to contemplate the invisible things of God, namely his power and divinity, as the Apostle Paul saith in Romans 1 verse 20, all things, all which things are sufficient to convince men and leave them without excuse. Okay, so this is the first way which God makes himself known to us. And it is what is known as general revelation. It is general revelation because God had made, has made this, inf this revelation available generally to absolutely everyone. So anyone who is in the universe and looking around in the universe will see uh, how God uh, is on display in the universe. So when you look at created things, then you say, wow, this is amazing. This thing must have been created by a God. And I see, if I see intelligence in created beings, then I know that the creator must be an intelligent being. If I see the majesty of creation and the power in creation, then I, it points to the almighty power of God, who is the one who created those things in nature. So this is general revelation. It's also called natural revelation. And so the, the natural revelation is what God gives to us. And then we use that information and we can construct a natural theology, a theology that you can do and you can come to understanding of God through that natural revelation in, uh, that God has made available to us. Okay, but so Paul says that this uh, is sufficient to convince men and leave them uh, to be without excuse. So no one can say that I didn't know there was a God because the heavens declare uh, the glory of God. And so they prove that uh, God does exist and they point towards that, okay? And uh, Romans is so interesting because it actually makes the point that God's in his attributes and his power is known. So some of these attributes that we read about here in Article 1, they're actually revealed to us and made known to us through general revelation. Okay, but general revelation is not all that God has given us. He has also given us special revelation. Here we see it. Secondly, he makes himself more clearly and more and fully known to us by his holy and divine word. That is to say, as far as is necessary to us to know in this life, 
to his glory and our salvation. This is amazing. Okay, so God has also given us a special revelation in his holy word. Yeah, this is what we know, obviously, as the scriptures, the Holy Bible. So God has made himself known in his word. Now, when I uh, teach the doctrine of scripture to young people, we often use the acronym SCAN to teach them the four uh, important doctrines about the scriptures. It is SCAN. The first uh, part of SCAN is the sufficiency of scripture. Now, the, here in the Belgian Confession, we're going to see that the Belgian Confession actually uh, does teach us all four of the doctrines of, of these important doctrines of Scripture. Okay, so first of all, that Scripture is sufficient. This means that in the Bible, we have everything revealed to us that we need to know in order to be saved. Okay, so yeah, it is necessary for, for us to know in this life to His glory and our salvation. Okay, so exactly. This is the doctrine of sufficiency is that everything that we need to know to be saved and everything that we need to know to live a godly life and glorify God is revealed to us and made known to us through this special revelation of Scripture. The second letter is clarity. Here we see uh, that we see clearly right here. This is the doctrine known as the clarity of Scripture. So this is also known as the perspicuity of Scripture. And in uh, the time of the Reformation, this was an important point that the Reformers made. They said that the Scripture is clear. The Scripture, as it is written, is understandable to ordinary people. So it was not just the clergy or the church who was able to interpret the Bible correctly, that the Bible, because it was a revelation from, from God in order for God to reveal himself to us, that therefore God has written and given the scripture uh, to us in such a way that it is understandable for ordinary people. So this is, uh, this is of course, to say that is the main message of scripture that is very clear to us, that we can see the main points in scripture are, are, are apparent to everyone. And so you don't need any special education to understand it. And uh, you certainly um, do not need uh, even to know the original languages of Greek and Hebrew to be able to understand it because the scriptures are clear and they can be translated as well. Okay, so that is uh, the doctrine of the clarity of Scripture. Next, we have the authority of Scripture. And here we see it, that the Belgian Confession says that God has made himself fully known to us by his holy and divine word. Now, if the Bible is from God himself, if it has a divine source, and then if the Bible itself can be called holy, it, if it shares this attribute of God who is a holy God, then we see that the scripture is authoritative because of its authoritative source. That God himself, because of he is the creator, and we just read about his wonderful attributes, so he is the highest authority and therefore his word is the highest authority. And because God himself cannot lie and God is perfect and God does never make an error, Therefore, his word also uh, cannot lie to us and it will not make any errors and it is the highest source of revelation and it is therefore also fully trustworthy. Uh, yes, and so the scripture is authoritative. The final letter in scan is N, which stands for necessity. This is the necessity of scripture. And here we see it. Um, uh, in the thing, we obviously we see there the word necessary, but the reason why uh, we need scripture is because general revelation is not enough. In the first part here, it showed that scripture or general revelation gives us enough so that we would be without excuse, that we have been given enough revelation from God in in a general sense that we will be justly condemned because we do not worship God. Instead, we worship created things instead of the Creator Himself. But in general revelation, we are not told enough. We do not have enough revealed to us for us to be saved. 
because you need to know the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in order to be saved. And you cannot know the gospel by just studying natural revelation. You need to have the special revelation which God has given to us in his holy word, which tell us about the gospel and the Lord Jesus Christ. So the scripture is absolutely necessary. This special revelation from God is necessary for us to know everything uh, that we need to be saved. So there you have it. Those are the four doctrines of scripture, uh, which you can remember with the acronym SCAN, and we find them all here in Article 2 of the Belgic Confession.